It's now time for What's Up Asheville, sponsored by the city of Asheville, with the host, Mr. Sam Parada, and here he is. Hello, Asheville. How's it going? Uh, welcome to What's Up Asheville here on WRES 100.7 FM. I'm your host, Sam Parada, and today with me, we're going to talk about the neighborhood ma- matching grants again. Uh, we have Meredith Friedheim, my uh, co-worker here in Cape and then today we also have two special guests uh, Billy and Seku from representing the South Side neighborhood and I hope I said your name correctly <laughs> yes, yes, you did. Uh, how are you guys today doing well doing well thank you yeah, doing great thank you for coming um, so there are some changes happening to the neighborhood matching grants um, coming up uh, right Meredith yeah, so um, the Neighborhood Matching Grant Program, this is our fourth year, and we've made some smaller changes, but the, the big one is that we're on rolling applications, so there's not a hard deadline, and neighborhoods can apply at whatever time that works for them. And uh, again, I'll just say who I am for a second. I'm, I'm Meredith Friedheim, Neighborhood Services Specialist, and I work in the Communication Engagement Department at the city, and uh, it is... A really rewarding part of my job to uh, manage the neighborhood matching grant program. Uh, it's been around since 2021. We've had 36 projects get funded in in those three years. So looking forward to this upcoming year. <laughs> and what that means now is that you don't have to come up with a plan by a specific deadline. Just you know get together with your neighborhoods, um, with your neighbors, and just come up with a plan so that you can submit it to the city and hopefully get uh, funding for whatever it is that you need. So can you talk to me a little about the amount of money that goes into the projects and how one can go at uh, submitting an application? Yeah, so neighborhoods can apply for up to $5,000 in funding. It is a matching grant, so uh, groups have to match that 5000 or whatever it is that they apply for in a combination of volunteer hours, in-kind services, or, in- or cash donations. And the volunteer hours, 50% of the match has to be in volunteer hours, so that is one requirement there. And the project or the the program funds a variety of different projects. We really like to leave it up to neighborhoods to imagine what and self-determine what they want to see and and what is going to be seen as an improvement for them. And uh, there there is a lot of creativity coming from the neighborhoods. Every year we get, can we do this project or that project? And I'm like, well, we haven't seen that one come through before. (laughs) So um, it's really cool to see what what groups think of. Mm -hmm. And so this year you're also doing a workshop um, for neighborhoods or just people to show up and what goes on there? Yeah, so uh, this is something that is brand new this year. Uh, We're having a drop-in workshop event on February 19th. That is a Monday from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Grant Center in Southside. And uh, that is for the public and whoever's interested to drop in and learn more about the program, kind of make your way through different tables, connect with past awardees and talk to them about their projects, connect with staff uh, and ask questions about what would be eligible, uh, talk to me about the application process, and also uh, the Sustainability Advisory Committee and Riverlink are gonna be there to talk about, or to talk to anyone who's interested in uh, specifically those stormwater and green infrastructure projects. So really looking forward to that. We will have snacks. So <laughs> and feel free to bring your kids too. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Um, and yeah, so we have two guests here today again, Billy and I will get your name right, Seku. Um, so you two are here to tell us how uh, the matching grants have benefited Southside. Um, so, you know, My hope as a city employee and a citizen of Asheville is that these grants are benefiting um, your neighborhoods, all of them. Um, So um, just, I guess, jump in and tell us more about yourself, um, how you represent the neighborhood and what the project was that you were a part of. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I I can go first. My name is Billy Enright. I am a resident of Southside. 
um, and I am the vice chair of the Southside United Neighborhood Association. Um, I've been the vice chair for the past year and a half. I was able to participate in the early formation of that group and again uh, the funding uh, provided by the Neighborhood Matching Grant really uh, provided folks like myself an opportunity to be there um, to have the the, the stipulations of child care and food and things like that supported really helped me and my family try to show up. And, um, I'd be happy to get to more of that in a second. I was going to let Seku introduce himself and say a little bit more about the Neighborhood Association. Sure, sure. So my name is Seku Coleman. Um, while, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, while I'm not a resident of the Southside neighborhood, I have been actively involved with the Southside community since 2017 in a variety of different capacities, largely working to um, support the residents with um, defining a new narrative for that community. It is one of Asheville's legacy neighborhoods. It is a neighborhood that was decimated through urban renewal. Um, and there's a lot of uh, pain and, and harm and, and trauma that exists that the residents are working to heal from. And programs like the Neighborhood Matching Grant have supported the ability for the neighborhood to do that. Um, and so, yeah, we got two uh, neighborhood matching grants in the past couple of years. Uh, one, as Billy mentioned, was instrumental in just supporting our regular meetings, which take place on the third Thursday of every month at 6 p.m. at the Grant Center. Um, and the other was for a, um, a community engagement event, which, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so, Billy, you want to tell them a little bit about the, the monthly meetings and how the neighborhood matching grants supported that? Yeah. <clears throat> so, again, uh, we're a, a young neighborhood association. Everybody's doing this on volunteer work and doing their best right after work or wherever they come from to show up. And we found that uh, people just needed a little bit of help. Uh, food and child care uh, were really part of the core things that we wanted to get help with. And um, uh, Meredith and her team were coming to the meetings and let us know about these opportunities. Um, and it was great. We were able to see the city show up and find real practical ways uh, to support us. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we. Um, one of the interesting things is I had never written a grant before. I wanted to be helpful, wanted to <laughs> serve this, this group that had been resilient uh, for a number of years. Uh, and I really uh, asked Christina and Meredith to, to, to help me along the way, and they, they did an amazing job. It really uh, was really clear on what the guidelines were. The application process was really simple, and I, I really did my best, and they came back with like just the great helpful context that would allow it to be expedited and, and get through and, and passed. And they gave lots of tools to help us track our volunteer hours <clears throat> that, that was really great to not have to construct something that would be acceptable for all the parties they, they provided that to us and then they were really checking in continuously to get feedback of what's helpful um, how can they support us uh, and strengths and weaknesses and so we really felt um, just empowered through that opportunity and again that we were able to request and match with volunteer hours the the full five thousand dollars and that was a that was a pretty sizable <clears throat> amount of money for our little group. Um, so yeah, uh, my experience was is someone who was fresh to the, the grant writing application, working with the city, understanding a lot of this stuff. It really uh, was not as, as challenging as I thought it was, and it was really re <clears throat> rewarding for our community. So I was really thankful. Um, I was able to do the, uh, the second grant uh, this past year, and uh, just with some experience and some more help with Meredith and team, we were able to, to, to talk about a dream of a, a community uh, Southside reunion. Um, and I'll let Seiko speak more to, to the, to yeah, the yeah. power of that reunion. So the, the historically, the Southside reunion is an event that has taken place for many, many years uh, at Wall Street Park. Um, and it was the kind of thing that uh, residents um, marked on their calendar uh, they were excited. Um, they would come back. Uh, families would reunite. Um, and uh, it was a lot of joy and celebration and, and fun. Um, and that had been continuing for a while. Um, and then COVID comes along 
um, and um, changes everybody's world. So um, the reunions had not been happening for a while, and a lot of things had also changed over the years since the reunions began. Uh, in particular, there were different requirements around how the park could be used and uh, permits that were required and those sorts of things. Um, and it was a lot harder for just the average citizen to sort of coordinate an event such as that. Um, so with the Neighborhood Association being um, in its early stages and getting going and getting a lot more traction, this was the kind of event that seemed like a good opportunity to uh, raise awareness, uh, let many of the legacy residents know that we were in existence and that we were doing things and that there was a space for them to come and join us and be, uh, be active and participate. Um, and so the neighborhood matching grant that we got for that supported essentially the entire event. Um, and it allowed us to have um, an event where there was food, for free food for everybody. Um, there was a basketball tournament. There were card games. Uh, we had uh, entertainment. We had a, a dance team. We had musicians. We had a DJ. Um, Asheville on Bikes uh, was one of our partners, and they did a, um, a bike activation where they had different games and sort of obstacle courses where uh, they brought bikes and kids could ride around and pretend to sort of throw the newspaper uh, at these targets <laughs> or whatever. That was a lot of fun. Um, we had the team that normally provides our child care, um, Stella Stellar um, uh, Network. They operated a, uh, a kids activity space where they did face painting and some games. So it was really just the space to bring everybody together. And it was, it was a really, really good time. We got some wonderful photos of the event. Um, the um, uh, Asheville Citizen Times sent a reporter um, and there was a nice write up about it in the newspaper. Um, and so it was, a, it was a really, really good opportunity and we're looking forward to continuing it and moving it to the time that it traditionally has been, which is Labor Day weekend. So we're already in plans to get that going and, uh, and make it a, a regular thing and we're grateful for the Neighborhood Matching Grant to support this opportunity. Yeah, and it sounds like because of this, um, you know, your are collaborating as a neighborhood, events are happening. Um, do you find it like you're going to keep using the grants moving forward for, you know, whatever it is that the neighborhood needs? Yes. You see that? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're already talking about the next grant that we want to apply for. One of the things that I think is really great, just uh, echoing what Billy said earlier, is that these are really good entry level grants. You know, mm -hmm. I've been working in the nonprofit space since the mid 90s. Um, at a variety of levels, including you know being an executive director for a nonprofit at one point, um, and grant writing can be very intimidating and very labor intensive, um, and this process is is neither, um, and so it's it's good and it's a it's a good um, accessible amount of money that allows organizations to get certain things done. There are, as with all grants, there are certain requirements on what the funds can and cannot be used for. Um, and I do think it's important at least to keep in mind for those entities that have not applied for a, a matching grant in the past, um, these are generally reimbursable funds. So the organization will require to take on the expense up front and then submit for reimbursements uh, to, uh, to get that um, back and maybe that might change in the future or whatever but um, that is how things are but you know when an organization knows these things and knows it's got those resources then they can take advantage of them and so we're talking about how we can use a neighborhood matching grant this year to support some additional outreach and community engagement work that we want to do yeah and you know you mentioned how easy it is for this grant to work and I think that really shines a light on the work that Meredith and Christina have put together. Um, they're available. They mm -hmm. are incredibly helpful and well knowledge in what they do. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I just want to say, um, you know, the city or we are in no way trying to or in attempting to take credit for these awesome projects uh, that the neighborhoods are doing. Like this is totally dreamt up by the neighborhoods themselves. And, um, you know, the reason we take this opportunity to be on this radio show, et cetera, is um, to showcase the cool things that neighborhoods are doing and 
hopefully get more diverse, different uh, neighborhoods applying for these projects. Uh, what Seiku mentioned about uh, it being generally a reimbursement grant, that, that is correct. We, we can do an upfront payment, but it has to be spent in 30 days, so you, you sort of have to have everything lined up. Um, just being local government, it's, it can be a little difficult being, uh, we're figuring out all that finance stuff because, you know, we have to be extra responsible about our public dollars. Um, but we are trying to be a little bit more flexible on what funds can be spent on. One thing that we have changed this year is um, stipends. Uh, are allowed uh, and also entertainment which I know was a thing for the coming home reunion event so that uh, you know we could pay for something like the the dance troupe uh, next time uh, so so that's really exciting and also I think one thing that's important for anybody who's part of a neighborhood group is you do not have to be like a 501c3 or have your financial you know a bank account situation um, I know that uh, Southside I think or I know, uh, went through a nonprofit as their fiscal sponsor. So you do not have to have that stuff figured out. You can go through a partner organization for that. And I, I don't know if that's overly complicated. You guys already had a relationship there, um, but yeah. Yeah, well, so that all sounds, me, for me, for example, all of this sounds really difficult to do, but I know that I could always re reach out to you, show up to the workshop, um, just learn and ask questions because we will help you and that's a part of being the local government You know, we don't have the funds of the federal governments or even state governments, but You know, we try our best um, With what we have which may not be a lot, but it's often enough to make a difference as you both have mentioned uh, And I'm really hoping that all these amazing events continue going for the next foreseeable future um, and you know the goal would be you never need us again <laughs> but we're always there when you do need us so again thank you meredith uh, really good work um and uh, i just want to make a quick point to you know the grants are not just for events correct so they can be for a variety of oh, yeah. things yeah i can give some examples and and there's a encourage you to visit the website to to learn more but uh groups have done things like a trailhead kiosk, uh, community garden improvements, um, plantings in the public right of way, neighborhood entry signs, um, invasive species removal along a greenway. So there's a lot of those kind of physical improvement stuff. And then also, um, I mean, the Southside United Neighborhoods first grant was for capacity building. Uh, so that's kind of a, a wide thing, a range of things that you could do that involve capacity building. The, the whole point behind the program is to strengthen strengthen partnerships and, and for neighborhoods to be able to build capacity. And, uh, you know, in a lot of areas of what the city does and sort of why the city is doing this um, is we don't get the opportunity to uh, empower neighborhood groups or, or residents and we're trying to do better about that. Um, you know, a lot of things that the city has done over the years have not been perfect and for some that might be an understatement, mm -hmm. but this program is one of a very, you know, rather small financial way, but um, hopefully a way that we can do a little bit better and, and working and collaborating with the community, so. Yeah. Yeah. And I can say one of the things that's helpful is the neighborhood matching grants kind of represent what's the needs and what's on the heart of the communities, and that helps the city. All the changes to what's being allowed by the neighborhood grants and the changes of the strategy, it's actually the city hearing what the needs are, especially to get these smaller organizations going. So I do think it's helped us <clears throat> build better relationships with the city and all of the learnings and things happening. Again, folks like myself who are new to engaging uh, with city, county officials and things like that. It's a steep learning curve, but with the neighborhood matching grants, you're able to build those relationships and uh, build that trust and just kind of learn a little bit more. So there's been a lot of other opportunities that Meredith and team have let us know about. Um, and it's just great to, to have that relationship there to, to, to support us. Yeah, and you're building, you know, um, how often do you walk down the neighborhood and can't say that oh that person is x and y first last name 
with how many children like you get to know your mm-hmm. neighbors yeah. uh, you need to you get to know the history of your neighborhood whether it's good or not so good and you know work on improving it mm-hmm. um, and you know it takes a little bit of everyone the city has services that uh, the uh, population is not either aware of or there is not much input they have on it such as I don't know trash collecting mm-hmm. um, waterways, um, whatever else that we do. We, have, we do so many things. But there's also the aspect of building those relationships, mm-hmm. making sure that you know we're doing what we can for you. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's not just writing a check, <laughs> but we're working with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so thank you for bringing that up because it's part of why we work for the city. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure that everyone feels like they belong. And I know historically that's not been the case uh, for many populations in Nashville. And I'm also kind of new to Asheville. Mm -hmm. I've been living here for almost three years now. Um, So it would be easy for me to say that I didn't do it. It doesn't affect me. But at the end of the day, we do need to work together to accomplish this. And we cannot do it alone. (laughs) We need people like you, Billy and Seiko, to really tell us what it is and, you know, work Mm -hmm. with us. (laughs) Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to ask you as well, you know, um, you applied for the grant and you got in touch with Meredith and Christina um, and you got to work on a plan. But when it comes to the project management, the actual, um, you know, taking steps to make it happen, how was that for you? Uh, for me, <clears throat> the the first grant, which was capacity building, uh, I was luckily stepping into a structure that was already there, just not supported with a lot of funds or things like that. Um, so what it did, it, it really enabled us to continue doing it um, the way that we'd like to do it. I know Seiko and, and Shavonda and the leadership uh, that were there in the early days were really just, just doing their best with, with um, just needing a lot of people to pitch in. but. It definitely gave us some confidence that we could have regular meetings and feed people and have child care for a year, which was, it's like, it's a big deal to mm-hmm. get, be able to give that commitment to where people will show up. And, you know, we had a couple of days early on before we got the grant where our kids had to kind of be in the room next door and, you know, we were in and out. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely huge uh, for us to, to have that confidence, that peace of mind. Uh, to execute. I, uh, you know, with this whole uh, conversation about capacity building for Southside, I know y'all just turned in the, the plan on the page for the city. I feel like it all relates. And, um, you know, what if you were going to tell folks out there what Southside United's goal is, or ask, you know, in in your one elevator speech, <laughs> so, you know, what is what is Southside doing? What is Southside about? Well, I think the the most um, succinct way to uh, explain what's going on and what has been going on is um, amplifying the, uh, the the profile of the neighborhood, uh, honoring its history, um, and um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, crafting a new narrative for the future. Um, the The neighborhood has been. Um, late to the game, if you will, in terms of forming a neighborhood association. Um, And there are other particularly legacy neighborhoods such as, you know, um, Burton Street and Shiloh and East End that have been doing the work that we've just gotten started doing. They've been doing it for 10, 20, 30 years. Um, And so this has been very um, instrumental in, um, in showing residents that there's a pathway to to see change and to implement change. And um, you know, from where we started at some of the early meetings to where we are now, there's been a significant amount of growth and residents have commented on it. They've talked about how they've seen, you know, Billy has been part of the 
of the uh, Neighborhood Association's first leadership team. Um, and they've, they've talked about it. And, and also it's been a great opportunity to, um, it's been a great opportunity to bring together the different aspects of the neighborhood. You know, one of the biggest challenges with legacy neighborhoods in, in many cities is that they're at risk of gentrification, right? And Southside is no stranger to that. It's one of the most rapidly gentrifying communities in the city. Um, and so you've got residents like Billy who moved in just a few years ago this has created an opportunity for him and his family to be deeply engaged along with residents who have grown up in the neighborhood and have owned their homes for 30, 40 years or more. And to work together around issues that impact both of them because whether you just bought your home or whether you've owned it for you know, decades, you're still impacted by the same things, right? If people are speeding down the street, that's an issue that's going to affect your kids as well as grandkids and somebody else's kids, right? If there are other kinds of things that uh, need to be addressed by the community, then the Neighborhood Association creates a space where that can happen. And it didn't exist before we got it started, and the neighborhood matching grants were a huge part in keeping the continuity and the consistency of the meetings to the point where people could see and say, oh, okay, this is what's going on. I, because that's also one of the things that happens in a lot of these communities that have been significantly impacted by urban renewal. They, there's a trust issue. And so people was, well, I hear these people say this thing, but I'm just gonna sit back and see how that's going. And so by meeting consistently month after month after month and doing events and being there, people come through and it's like, okay, well, this is my first meeting, but you know, I've lived here for a long time and I'm ready to get involved. So that's really what it is that we're trying to do is to create that space, create that container so that the neighborhood has the ability to define its future and create the types of things that it, it wants and needs to, to thrive. You just got to look out for each other. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we are running to the end of the show. Um, thank you so much for sharing all of this. I just wanted to take a little segment at the end to talk a little bit more about the workshop uh, coming up. Um, you'll both be there. Uh, I hope soon. so. Yeah. <laughs> we hope to give a similar message of yes. just get in there and you know maybe a couple hours worth of your time. It could it could make a huge difference. Oh, for sure. I think I think just I think the first step is just showing up. Really, <laughs> show up, learn about it, talk to people who've done it. Um, so, Meredith, you said February 19th. 19th. February 19th, which again is a Monday, 4 to 6. We wanted to catch people who were getting off work at 5, but also, you know, be a little bit earlier. Um, and yeah, come in, and we're hopefully going to be offering uh, a little giveaway to people who stop by all the works up workshop <laughs> stations so a little Your bit passport. of incentive there yeah. um and yeah if you are thinking about the neighborhood matching grant program if you're curious about it if you've been a past awardee but you have a totally different project or totally different neighborhood leadership or if you feel totally confident and you're already going to turn in your application but you just want to come <laughs> say hi um we would love to see you february 19th 4 to 6 p.m at the grant center so if i'm a first time goer um what can i expect when i come in um hopefully a smiling face when you walk in the meeting room <laughs> door and we'll sign you in and We'll probably have some folks from the Neighborhood Advisory Committee there as well. Um, we'll, I'll be there, and Christina Israel will be there to talk about what the program is as kind of like the first station and just to greet you, and then you'll kind of work around what are some project ideas, um, who are some past awardees that you can talk to, uh, different stations with displays and photos, and uh, hopefully we'll use the TV in there to, to do a slideshow or something like that. And uh, you'll also be able to schedule a consultation meeting uh, with me or any staff or to do a walkthrough or just a phone call. Uh, we can go ahead and get that on the books uh, while, while you're there. So. Perfect. Thank you. And I just want to say, uh, I don't think I've ever seen you frown, so <laughs> <laughs> always smiling. <laughs> Trust me, I, I have other moods. <laughs> uh, so yeah, show up, um, learn, apply. Um, maybe your idea is crazy. Maybe it's impossible, but hey, maybe <laughs> Meredith can work out some details to make it happen. And you know, 
again, thank you for showing up today because what I love to see with things that come from small governments, because it's it's difficult, you know, we're not that heavily funded. Um, and whenever we have a success story, it's really nice to just get it out. Like, please come talk to us and, you know, just participate in what we do. Um, I, again, I want to come from your mouths, but I think this has been an improvement to your community. Um, hopefully you can see more of it. And yeah, you just came from applying and working with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks so, so much for y'all's time, Seiku and Billy with Southside, uh, and for your time in general to your community. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for having us. It's not easy. <laughs> and just want to shout out Southside. You know, show up to the meetings. Help us out. We we're carrying a lot of weight for the community. We got we have big dreams, but we we need to stick together. So um, yeah, please show up if you can and, and try it out. And uh, you, you'll come with people willing to get into the to the real things. And uh, got great leadership. Got great people around us. Third Thursday of the month, 6 p.m. at the Grand Center. We have a fresh, healthy meal provided by Southside Kitchen every month. <laughs> and I hope that you guys become a shining example to every other neighborhood in Nashville. Um, but that's all the time we have today here on What's Up Asheville. Thank you again, Meredith, Seiko, and Billy for showing up and sharing your experiences and better ways to improve um, yourselves and your community. Uh, my name is Sam Ferreira, and we'll see you next time here on What's Up Asheville on WRES 100.7 FM. Be good to one another, Asheville. You've been listening to What's Up Asheville, sponsored by the city of Asheville in collaboration with WRES 100.7 FM. This program will re-air every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1230. Thank you for listening.